Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee, and in this video, I want to take you through the installation of a Roofmaker Slimline Lantern. Now, as you can see, we've built the flat roof, we've laid the decking, the insulation is actually sandwiched in between the decking, and we've built what they call the curb. Now, when you build the curb, the minimum is 25 millimeters, but in actual fact, on a flat roof, it's a good idea to have a bit more than that to stop people walking over it. At the back of the roof, the curb is slightly shallower than it is at the front of the roof, and that's due to the fall. We've got the fall on the roof going this way, so you'll see that there's a kind of tapering edge, but when the roof lantern goes on it goes on this curb absolutely level and it's got a built-in curb of its own now the great thing about the roof maker lantern is that you don't have to lay the roof membrane the waterproofing whatever you're using whether it's fiberglass or felt or one of the single ply membranes you don't have to do that before you fit the roof lantern so you can bring that membrane up afterwards into the roof lantern to waterproof it that's a good convenient thing because it means you're not hanging around waiting for trades to come along and complete the waterproofing of the roof. You can get on with the job. Now all roof maker lanterns are made to measure but because it's a structural element it's supporting a lot of glass there are obviously some restrictions on the sizes. If you're going for a four meter long window you can go up to two meters wide so four by two if you go over that up to six meters then you have to narrow that width down to 1.6 and if you narrow the width down even further to 1.2 you can go to any length you like now if you've got an orangery and you want one single lantern all the way along it this is absolutely ideal but all those measurements all those dimensions are given on the chart so the other important dimension is that when we build this curb this upstand we make sure that we've got 70 millimeters of width on that upstand to support the frame. So Robin's constructed this roof and the important thing is that the curb all around here which is where the lantern's going to sit is absolutely level but obviously with a flat roof you've got to have some fall in it and you don't get water you don't want water being trapped behind the lantern so what have you done here Robin? Fall okay wise? so where you're standing Roger is the high spot so all the falls fall away so what I've done in this particular roof because we've got a tiled edge that goes all the way around between yeah. say the head of the frame and the high spot the high flat roof we've got an equal trim so I've actually form the falls in two directions and they're effectively mitered in the corner so the trim's equal. Yeah that's nice so when you look at the building you won't see a taper going no, on there. No you get a perfectly parallel trim above the tiles and the lead flashing. That's beautiful right let's get this frame on this frame actually comes ready assembled doesn't it but if it it's does. bigger you might get it in a kit form which is just fitted together with cleats. Yeah, yeah? so it's mitered and then there's an engineered cleat that goes inside it's all pre-drilled it's just a matter of carefully getting it together and putting the screws in. All right let's get going. Do you know what? It doesn't matter how many years you've been in this game, when you do the measurements and you actually physically put the frame on and you go, it fits. It's always a little bit of a, a relief, isn't it? Absolutely, there's always a bit of anxiety, especially when you've not got the product. So let's say the product's not arrived, yeah. but you've got to get the thing ready and yeah. the product's arrived and you're like, please, will it go? But I mean, the <laughs> thing is, they were quite clear about the way we gave them the dimensions and the way our curb had to be. So it's quite simple. Okay, the other thing that I like is the fact that this is delivered by their own carriers. Now, any builder knows the nightmare situations where you've got a load of stuff that's delivered by a courier, half of it comes damaged, it slows the job down, you're ready to do the job, you can't complete it. So the fact that this has all come from their own transport, straight out of their factory, straight onto site, there's no damage to it. It's a rail colour, you can have this in, in obviously any colour mm. you like, but it's a rail colour and if there was any damage to it, you could actually touch it up and the company will provide you with a touch up pen if you need it. But I, I always try and work on the basis that zero tolerance, we don't have any yeah. damage, you know, we yeah. don't, 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 don't be cavalier about it, then you haven't got to worry about touching it up afterwards, you know. Absolutely. So, so it, it arrived in perfect nick, so we're going to fit it in perfect nick. Yeah, the name of the game is take your belt off, take your hammer off, put that to one side, put your tools to one side and just make sure you've got a really good, clean work environment, then you're not going to go wrong. Now what we're 
need to do, Roger, is we're going to put a silicon bead 20 millimeters in from the inside edge. So it's roughly on the inside of the thermal brake. Because we're going to drop this onto a wet bed of silicon. Before I do that, I'm just going to, because it fits dead plush from my upstand, just going to whack a couple of those on there so we can dip the edge against it and lower it down without trying to slide it so it doesn't skid around and it just means that we get it first time exactly in position. Okay. I thought when you said you got a tip for me it was going to be the 330 at Kempton Park. Happy? That's a deep question. And drop. So straight away we're happy with that, we'll just whip them off. Load of speed to something. So we're nice and sensible. A child can use. Because it's all like these impact drivers, they've got so much power, they just drive the, all the well, way through. Yeah, that's the thing people don't do is change the setting on them, that's why. Perfect. You've got your, um, your hex bit, Robin. It's time to get all of the other components out of the box. It's simple, it's in one box, and there's a checklist on the front, which I always find particularly helpful because I don't know what I'm looking for. So at least here I can go through the list. Someone's already checked that it's in there. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna get it all out, put it to one side, identify the bits, and it should be fairly simple from there on in. So let's have a quick pull out what we got. All, right. all wrapped up. And in the bottom, let's give this a little... Oh. Fixings. And plenty of that. You're good there, mate. I think you're perfect there. The first one takes like two hours, the second one takes an hour, the third one takes 20 minutes. So these are the glazing packers and I've put a few of these in in the past and if you'd asked me, if I hadn't read the instructions, I would have put it in smooth side up. But in actual fact it goes in that way around with the grooves because the glass sits in that groove there. So just a little thing. And because we're going to put a dob of silicon on each end just to stop them sliding around, it's best to get them the right way around. First time out. Now, just a little bit of science here. These frames are thermally broken. And when I said to a customer, the frames are thermally broken, she said to me, oh, I want broken ones. Anyway, it means basically you've got a bit of insulating between the two layers and you can see this bar only comes to the inner layer so there's no transmission of cold from the outer to the inner. Right, in at the bottom first then. Yeah. Yeah, Jip, that's it. nice and gently. Right, Roger. Go on. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to need that sucker on the other one. There we go. On the big one. That's good. Oh, mind your thing, Norman. All right. Good. We not yet yeah, perfect. Then we're going to treat them.
I'd like to say I've learnt a few new things today, Roger. Yeah, but you haven't. I have. I have, yeah. <laughs> One thing in particular I've learnt, courtesy of the guys from Roofmaker, is the fact that 40 degrees is the optimum pitch for self-cleaning glass. Yeah. I never knew that. So that's it, that's our first ever installation of a roof maker lantern and quite honestly the words piece of cake come to mind because there wasn't anything difficult about doing this and what I really like is the slim profile, the fact that it's very minimalist, it's strong obviously but you're not looking at glazing bars when you look up to the sky. What do you reckon, Robbie? Yeah, I think it's really nice. It's um, a straightforward product once you've got your head around the instructions, which is fairly straightforward. Um, easy clean glass, triple glaze in this case, so that's nice as well. Yeah, so good insulation values. I think it's a winner, and I reckon we get a lot faster. That first one took us a couple of hours because we're feeling our way yeah. and filming. filming yeah. I reckon the next one we're doing half that. Yeah, probably. Even less. Yeah, than no, that. Problem. no problem. Yeah. So if you want more information on this roof maker, roof lantern, go to their website where all the details of the product and you can see all the sizes and all the configurations. Mm -hmm.